Chapter 10. Clues. You three have done some wonderful detective work here, said Mrs. Walker later that afternoon, as she looked over their list of the information they found in the diary. This will all be quite helpful to us. We're going to start to fill in the story about these people's lives. Aunt Mary and Uncle Hutchinson's last name was Watson. So Hutchinson Watson was the son of Grandfather and Grandmother Watson. And you say there was, you say here that Anna's father made a blanket chest for a lady named Agnes Carr? Yes, that was in the, um, the in a letter we found, said Kendall. Absolutely amazing. The Carr family built a big brick home here on the shore. Their house is now a museum. You girls have been there, right? Asked Mrs. Walker. Oh yeah, Grandpa took us over there and we showed our stuff to Mr. Parks, the curator. He was pretty interested in everything and he made copies of the letters too, explained Kendall. Well then, he knows about the Carr connection if he saw these letters. I'm surprised he wasn't ecstatic when he read about Agnes Carr. This is an important piece of local history, said Mrs. Walker. Megan realized that the information about Agnes Carr was from the diary. Mr. Rock, Mr. Parks didn't know about the diary, at least not yet. I'm not sure if he actually read the letters. He made a copy, but maybe he didn't actually read them, suggested Megan. Astounding, really. And you wrote here that Eliza lives in Maryland. Do you know the name of the town? Asked Mrs. Walker. No, we didn't see that anywhere, answered Megan. By the way, what's a horn book? Well, a horn book was a teaching tool for children who were learning to write. It had the alphabet on it for the children to copy. It was called a horn book because the paper was mounted on a piece of wood and protected by a thin layer of horn that was almost clear. It was very important back then for children to practice good penmanship. Children took great pride in their carefully drawn letters. Not like today, unfortunately, said Mrs. Walker as she looked at her son. Oh, Mom, said Jack. We know, that baby Dor we know that baby Dorothy had three brothers, but we don't know their names, said Megan, reading from their list. And Eliza made a baby for Anna. That's a doll, right? That's right. Girls called their dolls babies back then, explained Mrs. Walker. And Anna's father made a cradle for Eliza's doll, said Kendall. We found a doll cradle in our box from the auction. Astonishing. This is just incredible, girls, said Mrs. Walker, as she continued to write notes down the sides of her paper. Can we ask you a few more questions? Asked Megan. Of course. Can you tell me what it means to cut quills? She asked. Well, I think you're talking about goose quills, right? Asked Mrs. Walker. I guess so, Megan replied. People plucked some of the feathers or quills from their geese. Then they used a knife to cut the quill at an angle to make a pen. They left the feathers on and that is what they wrote with. Jack, you know that pen knife you had? Asked Mrs. Walker. Yeah, it's called a pen knife because a long time ago, people used small knives like that to cut their quills to make pens. So they called them pen knives. And we still call them that today. Interesting, huh? Asked Mrs. Walker. Neat, I didn't know that. That's really cool, Mom. I have one more question, Mrs. Walker. What's a clothes press? Asked Kendall. A press, any kind of press, was like a cupboard. A long time ago, houses didn't have closets. People needed a place to store their clothes, their dishes, their books, and so they used specially made cupboards called presses. A clothes press held clothes, a linen press held bed linens, and a book press held books. You mean a clothes press isn't come some kind of a thing you press clothes with? Asked Kendall. No, it's a cupboard, and usually a pretty large cupboard that held clothes. It would be something like a wardrobe or an armoire, if you know what those are, explained Mrs. Walker. Megan was busy thinking about what Anna had written in her diary about the secret hiding place and the secret door and wondered what that had to do with the clothes press. Mrs. Walker, thank you so much for helping us. We might find a few more clues later because we have another letter or two to read. If we find out anything important, we'll come back and tell you, okay? Said Kendall. That's just fine. I'm enjoying this as much as you kids are, said Mrs. Walker with a smile. Back home, over a fresh fish dinner, the girls chatted excitedly with Grandma and Grandpa about the little cottage. Grandpa had several men lined up to help him with a few big projects like running electricity and water out to the house and fixing the roof. But he wanted the girls to help him start cleaning up the inside. They planned to get started early the next morning. 
Grandma, have you seen our old letters? asked Megan as she helped to clear the table. Oh, yes, I forgot to tell you. Mr. Parks called and asked if he could see them again. Apparently his copies weren't clear enough and he wanted to read the original letters. I hope you don't mind, said Grandma. That's fine. It's just that we were looking for them and I thought we lost them, explained Kendall. Well, they're safe and sound over at Car Place, said Grandma. Was Car Place Agnes Carr's house before, asked Megan. Well, yes, it was. How did you know about Agnes Carr, asked Grandma in surprise. Um, I think Jack's mom told us about her, right, Kendall? Asked Megan nervously. Oh, yeah, she did. She was telling us about, uh, about stuff that happened a long time ago. Did you know that pen knives used to be made, used to be for cutting goose quills to make pens, said Kendall, quickly changing the subject. Very interesting. I didn't know that, said Grandpa. What else did you learn? Asked Grandpa. Mrs. Walker told us about clothes presses. She said a long time ago, houses didn't have closets and they made cupboards to keep their stuff in, explained Megan. They called them presses and one for clothes was a clothes press and one for books was a book press. Neat, huh? Very neat. As a matter of fact, we might have one of those presses out in the little cottage. We'll have to take a look when we go out there tomorrow, said Grandpa. Megan flashed a look at Kendall, another possible piece to their puzzle. I'll be up in a few minutes to tuck you two in. Go on upstairs and get ready for bed, girls, said Grandma. Close call, Megan. You almost blew it with that Agnes Carr stuff, said Kendall when they got upstairs. I know it. I keep forgetting what we read in the letters and what we read in the diary, exclaimed Megan. I guess we better tell Grandma and Grandpa about it, the diary pretty soon. But we can wait a little bit longer, don't you think, asked Kendall. Well, I guess so, but I better keep my mouth shut or I'm going to get us in trouble, she replied with a laugh as the girls headed for bed.